Welcome to another TI Inspire tutorial. In this session, we'll work through solutions to the QCAA 2020 Tech Active Trial Paper 2. Tips and tricks will be illustrated throughout the video, and a string of keyboard shortcuts will be provided at the conclusion. So let's get started. Question 1. Students should recognize that a logarithmic function has a vertical asymptote, and that this particular example includes a translation of the function parallel to the x-axis. However, students may be distracted or uncertain about the change of base, so it would be appropriate to graph the function just to check. As this is the first question, I'll start a new document. I'll insert a graph application and graph log base 3 of x plus 5. With the standard window settings, we can see that the graph appears to have a vertical asymptote about the line x equals negative 5. We can graph the line x equals negative 5 just to provide further visual confirmation. Based on this information, I'll select option A. Question 2. The population of bacteria after t hours is given by a function p of t. We're asked to find the rate of increase of the population at t equals 15 minutes. So, some important things to consider here. We're asked for the rate of increase, which is dp dt, and also the function refers to t as hours, and yet we're asked to find it after 15 minutes. Word of caution. So I'll add a calculator application to my current document. Then I'll use the calculus menu to get the derivative at a point. My variable is t and here's where I'm being careful. I'm using 15 over 60 as my value of t. And now I just need to enter my function. 5000 e to the power of 0.18t. Press enter and I get 941 which is option D. Question 3. Using the trapezoidal rule with four sections determine the approximate area under the curve y equals x squared plus 5 between x equals 0 and x equals 2. The calculator does have the ability to determine a definite integral, but the question specifically asks for the trapezoidal rule. We can see by the diagram that the two areas, or the two results, would be very similar. The multiple choice options validate this. So let's try and understand the trapezoidal rule. It's the averaging of a series of left-bound and right-bound rectangles. The heights of the left-bound rectangles correspond to f of 0, f of 0 0.5, f of 1, and f of 1.5, each with a width of a half. The right-bound rectangles have heights f of 0 0.5, f of 1, f of 1.5, and f of 2, again, all with a width of 0 0.5. So, now that we have an understanding of the calculations, let's get stuck into them. I'll begin by defining a function f of x equal to x squared plus 5. Now I'll define a list of values equal to 0, 0 0.5, 1 and 1 1.5 that will allow me to efficiently calculate all four rectangle heights for the left bound values. So the area of each of these rectangles would be 1 half times f of x, where x is equal to n. So now let's find the sum of all of those areas. We can do both of these at once for the right bound rectangles by simply using x equal to n plus a half. Then just calculate the average of those two values. Now 
And there's our answer, 12.75. So, option B. Question 4. The area of the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals x root x plus 1 and y equals 2x is equal to. To answer this question, I'm going to use a graph application. I could go back to the one on page 1.1, however, I might want to refer back to that. So, I'm going to insert a new graph application. I'll enter my functions x by root x plus 1 and also y equals 2x. I'll use the Analyze Graph option and see that I have bounded areas. I'll select the left point and the right point being the intersection of the two graphs and if needed I can change the precision that's been displayed. Based on my answer I'm going for option A. Question 5 two particles move along the x-axis. During the period of time from 0 to 5, their respective functions are given by x1 as sine 2t and x2 as e to the negative 2t. And we need to find out how many values of t do the particles have the same position. Now, we don't need to find the values of t just how many times. So for that, I'm going to use a graph. Now, I could define my functions over that domain of 0 to 5. However, I'm just going to set the window settings because that's quick and easy. And I'm going to use my function editor. So it'll be f of x equals sine 2x and f of x equals e to the negative 2x. I'll set my window settings to go from 0 to 5 along the x-axis. And we can see that there are four points of intersection. So my answer is A. Question 6. The side lengths of a triangle are in the ratio 2 is to 3 is to 4. The smallest angle in this triangle is. Now, we could solve this using the geometry tool by basically drawing the triangle with side lengths 2, 3 and 4 and measuring the angle. However, it's quicker in this case just to use the cosine rule. But the diagram serves as a good reminder that the smallest angle be opposite the smallest side. So I can solve 2 squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 3 times 4 times the cos of A. And here's where we need to be careful. You'll see in the top right hand corner of my screen my calculator is currently set to radians. That's a good choice for when we're dealing with calculus, but in the case of a geometry problem, we really want degrees. So I could change my current mode settings to degrees, or I can override by adding the degree symbol to the A. And we see the answer is 28.96 degrees. So I'll select C. Question 7. The graph of the function y equals x cubed minus 6x squared is concave downwards when? Now we know from our notes that a function is concave downwards when the second derivative is negative. Now whilst we can't solve for a range of values, we can use a graph. So I'll graph my function x cubed minus 6x squared. Note that that function is being stored in f1 of x. Now I'll graph the second derivative And we see that the second derivative is negative when x is less than 2. So my answer is C. 
Question 8. A particle travels along a straight line with velocity defined by v of t. Determine the acceleration of the particle at t equals 2 seconds. Once again I'll use the calculus menu to find the derivative of a point because we know that dv dt will give us the acceleration. An important thing to note here is our velocity involves a trigonometric function so it's important to make sure that your calculator is set to radians. So the derivative of 3e to the negative t over 2 by sine 2t at t equals 2 is equal to negative 1.03 meters per second. So I'll select option A. Question 9. The birth mass of babies is normally distributed with a mean of 3,500 grams and a standard deviation of 500. We're required to find the probability that the birth mass of a baby is less than 3,200 grams. We can see our normal distribution and the red shaded area corresponds to the area that we require. To do this we'll just use our probability menu and normal CDF cumulative density function and we'll go from essentially negative infinity up to 3200, a mean of 3500, a standard deviation of 500 and we get the answer 0 0.27 which is option D. Question 10. A survey found that 142 people out of 200 aged between 30 and 39 have some form of tertiary qualification. We are required to determine a 95% confidence interval for the actual proportion of the population in this same age group that have a tertiary qualification. To answer this question, we need to understand that our sample represents a point estimate of the true proportion and that these point estimates are approximately normally distributed around the true mean, assuming the necessary conditions regarding sampling have been met. In other words, our sample may be a good or poor estimate of the actual mean. We just don't know. But we can determine an interval over which we will be 95% confident that the true population mean or proportion lies. We are provided with a proportion for just one sample, so we use a one proportion test and the normal distribution. To determine our confidence interval, we select statistics, confidence intervals, one proportion z interval. The quantity of successes in our sample was 142 drawn from a sample size of 200 and we're required to determine a 95% confidence interval. We see from the results that the lower bound is 65%, the upper bound 77%. So our answer is option C. That's all for the multiple choice questions in this sample paper. Keep watching to see some of our keyboard shortcuts and be sure to check out our other videos including part 2 of this sample paper looking at how TI Inspire can help check and answer questions for the short answer section.